Oh, you. I've heard you've been such a pig. I will not stand for it. Uh, I guess I will. Burn up. Burn. Give me some of that roast. Yes, do it. Oh. Oh, yeah. Haha. <laughs> Roasted pig for dinner. Or maybe it was lunch. Oh, whatever. Still, it's going to be tasty. Oh. Can I harvest with it? No. Okay, not very well, but I guess it does sort of work. Anyway, as you might have uh, understood, we're going to look at the robotic sledge or the junk sledge or whatever. I think it's called robotic sledge now, though, which is an really kind of somewhat interesting and very different type of weapon that we have in Semi Nisidai Alpha 19. But let's take a little bit of a look back to what this really is. So this is one of the new weapons that is for the intellect attribute skill tree, which is under the robotic inventor. And it's really, really the first one you get here that unlocks the robotic sledge crafting. If you just put one little point into robotic inventor and that allows you to craft quality two robots that deal 10 percent more damage have a 30 percent faster fire ro rate and reload extra rounds which of course does not apply to the robotic sledge because it doesn't shoot anything it's basically just a robotic sledgehammer so once you've unlocked it well how do you craft it well you can also unlock it by finding the schematic that's always something that you can do and like it says here, you need to go to the workbench, you need a bunch of things. And let's go do that. Robotic sledge, in a sense you need to have robotic parts. Some forged iron, some duct tape, polymers and spring. And how do you get the robotic parts? Well, that's where actually you need to find another robotic sledge, or the parts themselves, and scrap it. So really, it's fairly unlikely that you will ever craft this one, at least initially, because when you find it, you're not going to find the robotic turret. You're going to find the robotic sledge, which is really the entry level tier one weapon here. Now, the second tier is the junk turret. And the third one is supposed to have been the junk drone. You know, the flying thing that sort of falls you around and saps zombies and heals you a little bit. Unfortunately, that one, Madmol announced, is going to be pushed to Alpha 20, which I think is a big, big, big letdown. I mean, they had months to work on it, last two months of experimental, and we still don't have it. But anyway, it is what it is. So you can craft it, but obviously, if you find it, that's a lot easier. So what, does, what is the difference between the different quality levels? Well, you all, always start off finding low qualities, and you work your way up. And like anything else, if you look at this one, it has a melee damage of 11, attack speed, and the health or durability. Now these properties are somewhat random when you find them. It's not always going to be 11, it could I guess be 10, could be 12, could be maybe 9 depending on what the range is. So it's going to vary a little bit. So make sure you have a look if you have one quality 1 and you find another quality 1. Have a look at the different specific properties because it could be better or worse. But as you go up, you will see that they generally get better all the way to quality 6 where it does 17 plus minus and of course the attacks per minute seem to be, be pretty much static it does vary a little bit but it doesn't go up it's going to keep the same rate of fire your build however goes up if you look at the small one the quality one it has a lot less durability as well another big difference is that on the quality one you can only have one modifier slot in addition to the cosmetic slot on the quality 6 you have 4 quality 5 you have 3 and three and four you have two and i think two you also have one so keep in mind when you find a higher quality one even though the properties might be slightly worse like in this case the quality three has 15 quality four has 13 it's only a quality five that's got 15 but this one has more slots which means you can put in more things and uh, well mods rather and any mods you put in will increase the damage so that's something that is important to keep in mind and as you check up, remember that the attribute intellect affects the damage. So if you look at the first one, it does 200% headshot damage and 5% chance to dismember with stumbitos and robotic turrets. That goes all the way down to 300% headshot damage and a 50% chance, actually I believe it's a 50% greater chance to dismember with the robotic turrets. So this one basically means more damage. And on the robotic inventor skill, keep in mind that higher skill means better. So on quality one, deals 10% more damage, fires 30% faster, and reloads extra rounds, which of course doesn't really help. But robot active range does help because it increases slowly. As you go up to, let's say, four, you can now craft quality five robots that deal 40% more damage, shoots 100% 
120% faster, and uh, it has an active range of 17. As you go down to five, it's slightly different. Now they do reload faster and more rounds, which of course for the sledge doesn't matter. The active range is 18, but you can have two deployed robots at the same time, which is actually really, really helpful. Not that you necessarily will have two sledge turrets, but you could have one sledge turret and one junk turret that is shooting. And beyond, of course, just checking up in your skills, there are some special skills as well from these special books. And you probably know about them already, that uh, there are this uh, book tab, the perk book. And uh, you're going to go to the tech junkie here. And if you look at this one, this is a series of seven. Once you have unlocked all seven, the eighth one will also unlock. Now, the little bit weird thing about this one is that unlike, for instance, let's see, Spear Hunter, this applies to sp all of the spears. So you have the stone spear, iron spear, and the steel spear. So it's always useful. The weird thing about the tech junkie that I've highlighted before is that some of them apply to the robotic weapons and some of them apply to the stun baton, which is really, really weird. So if you look at the first one, you read this one, your robotic weapons do 10% more damage, which is useful. Second one, robotic weapons and stun batons degrade 20% slower, and that's actually also useful because you don't have to repair them as often. Now the third one, Crafting turret ammo, it doesn't help if you're not using the junk drone. And of course, the stun baton doesn't get any benefit. Same thing for number four. Number five, it helps for the stun baton, but nothing else. Six one also helps for stun batons, but nothing else. Seven helps for the fire rate of robotic weapons, but not for the stun baton. And of course, the ultimate ball crafting all robotic turret ammo is fairly useless, I have to say. And either way, it doesn't apply to the stun baton. And it doesn't apply to the junk sled because it doesn't use ammo. I think that they really should rework how they're doing that. I know what they're trying to do, but it's a little bit like they're sort of shoehorned it inside and saying that, hey, no, let's just stuff it into one series and be done with it. But I don't think it really fits because it's really different than, let's say, even the sniper. These ones work for all the sniper weapons. So we're going to read all of these ones here, even though we did need all of them. And that last uh, little music thingy which shows that i have unlocked the ultimate so what are all these mods and this is where it gets a little bit fun so as you tech up you will have one mod slot you will have two three four five four and then not five but you'll have to four and this is where you need to look at what kind of mods do you want to have so the way i normally organize it is one put on the color it makes it look slightly different and why not but also the first the highest one is really the tier one mods that i would suggest then we have the tier two and the tier three any mods is better than no mods so keep that in mind so the first one that i would probably put on is weighted head mod because it has a chance to stun and slow victims and that really helps second one probably is uh, one I really like is the, the burning shaft mod because it can set enemies on fire. Really nice. Third one, potential the rad remover. It's not going to be super useful because you might not kill them, but it's going to sort of prevent them from healing at least. So why not? And you could, for instance, do structural brace mod, which also helps. You could consider the hunter mod, but that one interferes with, I believe, is this one? Nope. Is it this one? Nope, it's this one. So you would have to give up your rad remover, which uh, if you're fighting bears and stuff like that, it might be useful, but I'm going to take these ones. And if you look at it, you'll see now it has 21 damage as opposed to what it had before. Take them all out, 17. So it's significantly better going from 17 to 21. The second layer is the flashlight. It doesn't actually allow you to have any flashlight on it. It just is a mod that does nothing. Fortifying, ergonomic, hunter, it's all right. The last one is really things that you never will really use before. You're not going to go chopping wood or, or bashing or mining iron or something like that. But they do count as a mod slot. So fill them in and it gives more damage on the sledge as any mod does. And doesn't that look nice? A nice green little goblin. Now, what you do is that if you right click and you'll see you get this outline and I right click here and I put it down. If I hold it and I left click, I'm actually firing it, but it sort of pushes you backwards or upwards rather. So it's like the recoil is fairly strong. Um, so normally what you want to do is you want to put it down on the ground and it will independently track sort of, I believe it's 180 degrees forward. I believe, yeah, 180 degrees. So anything that comes here, it will actually bash. And let's try that out. Let's try, uh, not a rabbit, maybe. Let's do a bow. Hello, bow. Oh, 
You wanna come over here? Yes, come over here. Let's see. Gonna bash him. Let's see if we go into God mode. You'll see it does a fair bit of damage there. Now, of course, because this is... Oh, let me not flying around. I'm standing behind, so... Oh, nope. It did not track him there, so let's learn ahead. Yep, you saw him bash them there. More damage and miss and there. And this is the nice thing about their burning shaft mod because it will set them on fire, which beyond looking really cool, it will actually probably kill him even if he walks somewhere else. You saw that he finally killed him there. So it's not super, super, super good at killing things, but it will help to delay things. So we're going to give into that for a while. You saw that was almost 50 damage. So if it hits nicely, it can do pretty good damage, at least on a quality six. And there he was looking at the wrong way. Unfortunately, you can't tell it to sort of only track a particular direction because you saw when it was tracking this way and it came from the front, it didn't even turn fast enough. It just cannot cope. Another problem is that if you have multiple of them, they might not fire fast enough. Now I have uh, specced up my skills so it fires faster which really helps it you see it really pushes them away and sets them on fire so i could stand behind here pretty well and just wait for them to die but what if we do what if we do some uh, radiated let's do three radiated and you'll see it can barely keep up with two and the third one obviously is finding me and i need to kite it around and it can't handle three so one or two seems to be all right if you have more than that you really need to run around it because you need to give it time to uh, work if you have the burning shaft mod and the red remover like i put on at least at least it will not be radiate while well, re regenerating the health and it will still be burning and that can be fairly useful at high level the thing though is that at a high level you might prefer the robot turret that will be shooting these ones instead of just bouncing them but it looks pretty cool Let's put back on the burning shaft. And I thought, hey, that looks cool. So now we have a nice flame. And then just like this one. But let me do this. Let me bring it down to midnight. So you see it's really dark now. If I bring up my uh, sledgehammer here with a light, you'll see that it lights up everything. I switched over to the sledge turret and or the robotic sledge. And you'll see there's a fire on it, but it doesn't seem to give off any glow. Which is a bit of a pity. It would be really nice if when it did like that, it actually would have a nice area that's sort of functioning as a torch. You'd be able to easily locate it and sort of see, look around it because it's supposed to have the burning shaft mod. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Uh, Fun pimps, that's something you guys can fix. So how do you use it effectively? Well, I've set up and it's really weird. The bulletproof glass is sort of very transparent, but I'm, I have a corridor here in the middle just to show what you could do. You could set this at a choke point. Let's put this, why can't I put it in? Let's put it there. Because it does mean that all the zombies that are coming this way will have to go through their junk sledge. So let's bring in a few of them. Let's do that. One. Okay, let me turn on the AI. That would probably help. Let's see. Yep, you'll just bash them back and you couldn't take all of them. As you notice, you do have to fight a little bit yourself. But, and watch, make sure you don't bash it. But you see, it does a pretty good job in just keeping the corridor clear. This is one way of doing it. You have a choke point. Let's put in a few more of the bows here. Hello. Come back this way. And that works reasonably well until you have too many zombies because then you simply cannot cope. But for three or something like that, maybe four, maybe it'll work. Okay, make sure you bash him when he comes in. So it's a one way to just use them to control the choke point. Yet another way is to do something like this. You have a little bit of a pathway in your base or wherever you are. And let's bring in uh, some of these ones. Come on, let's do that. But they should be coming up here and hopefully he's giving them a little bit of a love tap here. And come on, yes, bam. You see, he push, pushes them off. And if there are not too many coming at the same time, he should be able to keep this place just nice and clean. And of course, you can always fight yourself here if you have a bow or something or you have a weapon because you are very unlikely to hit it because it's on that side and none of them should be able to make it through to where you are. So this is really useful as well. And even if you have, let's do a pole. Uh, let's put in a cold, not a centered one, that's a good normal one. That shouldn't have to be stainless steel, but just to show it. So 
So I'm going to just do advanced rotation here. I'm going to put it like that. Like that. The reason for the pull is that uh, zombies should be. Let's see if we can get them up here. One. There we go. They should be coming up, but because you have the pole here, they actually cannot get to you. So there's no way for them to get to you. And as they try, your nice little friend, friend will be coming and uh, giving them a little bit of a love tap. Burning them even better and just keeping this area free. So as a killing corridor, you see this something like, what, 7 or 8 or something here? And it has no problem keeping up. Now these ones are feral. What if you put in some radiated? Why don't you try that as well? It should work essentially the same way because you're not relying on killing them that's not really what you're trying to do you're trying to basically just tap them to make them fall off and of course if you make this slightly higher you have less of an issue now he didn't make it all the way here but then it's simply going to reset and it's going to push them off so uh, as soon as they get pushed off they have to restart and go up again and you see this works fairly well and let's say i want to just stand here and fight i could a little bit difficult because a little Robotic Sledge is so much faster, I can't even bash him. Well, let's say you had a weapon or something that you could be standing here shooting. Even with a bow, it worked really well. You see, they have no... Oh, okay. If I'm not as down as going down, they have no way of actually getting to you. So this is probably one of the more powerful ways of doing it. You could do the this one by having a bit of a corridor, but I would say this is a lot more useful. If you don't want to use um, this one, you could, for instance, have a hatch. For instance, you could do hatch. Do that. And let's do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And something like that. That would work to sort of keep them out. And of course, you might want to do... Let me try it. So they don't jump over. Like that. Oh, okay, so well, this was a really dumb way of doing it, which you probably noticed yourself as well. Let's do... Right. So this was a really dumb way of doing it as well. Let's try that out again, making sure that we don't block where we want the turret to bash them. And that was, uh, yeah, that was a slight little oversight. I want them to be pushed out here. And if you block this off, obviously that can't happen. So I just put an overhang here so that he can't actually jump over. He could theoretically do that otherwise. This actually allows you to pass by yourself. So you can have this at your entrance your base and you see how well it works i could stay here pretty much the whole day i would say early game this one is uh, actually fairly cute and fairly convenient uh, little friend to have in your base maybe when you're exploring i would not call it that useful but uh, at your base i would say it can really help you at least early game so if you find it even if you don't have the skills and everything just put it at a choke point or put it where you can bash and uh, push off the zombies and i think you'll have a much easier time and uh, well make it green just like the nice radiated ones make sure you've subscribed to my channel and let me know in the comment section below whoa what a jump he did uh, what do you think of the robotic sledge is it good does it need to be changed does it need more perk books or oh, wow he really went flying i wish they would have sort of a repulsor mod for this one she could really fling them longer distance i think that would be really cool at least it's different it's something new that is an alpha 19 that we didn't have before and that's always fun to play with Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.